I have discovered a very odd twist in these heaters. You've probably seen these ones that are being heavily pushed online as being miracle heaters. And they've basically got this ceramic heat element in here. They've got the PTC heating system and a sort of computer style fan at the back. And I'll take this one apart. This one plugs directly into the socket. Depending where you are in the world, it will have a different style of socket attached to it. This one has a sleeved earth pin, which is a bit naughty, but I don't think it uses the earth. Well, we'll find out when we open this one, but that is not the subject of this video. It's this one. And the reason I got this one, I'll put that one down. The reason I got this one is because the picture showed this void where the heater was and I thought is this fa some fancy ceramic heating thing is this a different system and it turns out it's very primitive indeed and the flames this is just a basically a computer graphic it's a someone has uh, designed it and then this is the physical implementation and it's quite interesting it is quite interesting it's quite noisy as well so I've taken the screws out of this because they are horrible little uh, anti-tamper uh, triangular screws that were recessed deeply into it. I had to dig through for bits to, to find it. Now, let me just power this up and I'll show you it running. So here's the hoppy. And if I switch it on to full power, because it's got a, a switch at the back that gives low and high settings. Full power. I'll try and uh, keep this away from the microphone here. Uh, 363 watts. Unity power factor, which is pretty good. Then you switch it to the low setting. It makes a very odd noise. It, it flickers and it drops to 181 watts. And uh, the power factor goes down to 0.9. I thought it would have been worse than that, given what it's actually doing for the power control. But anyway, let's take a look at the flame effect first. Uh, so I'll just pause momentarily and set it up so we can see this. One moment, please. Right, I think I've sussed this, so I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn the light off. Uh, hold on, I'm going to focus down onto here first. Uh, turn this on, turn the light off. Uh, and this is the effect we're getting. It's a reasonable enough effect. I'm surprised it covers. Having seen the inside, I'm surprised it covers the whole thing. And you may notice it tends to go up in surges. Hopefully this isn't just blowing air at the microphone. When you turn it down to the lower setting. Oh, super flickery and very dim. Right, tell you what. That's enough of that. Back to the main video. The light is coming back. The light is back. Let's unplug it and explore what's inside. It may be a bit of an anticlimax. Many people said the other ones are probably just a hairdryer inside. This one is effectively a hairdryer inside. Here's what we got. Uh, this is unplugged. I just thought I'd mention that. Is the heat element still hot? Mm, it's not too hot. In the back of this... Down there, let me shine a light down there. We'll zoom down a bit as well, so you can actually see it. Down there is a little thermal fuse, that's a little white box, and here is a thermal cutout. This is good. If you look at the uh, windings down there, you can see a yellow wire and a red wire. The red wire is live, the yellow wire is a tap coming off part of the windings down there. Um, other than that, there's a little uh, motor at the back, which is... Uh, being powered from a bridge rectifier here. And what's actually happening is it's taking a tap, as many hair dryers do, it's taking a tap off the heater, just using it as a resistive divider. It's going to a little bridge rectifier down here. Then it's going up to the circuit board that marshals the power out to the effect motor. Now, the effect, normally this concertinaed reflective mylar, what they normally do, they put a dot of glue at each end and they actually rotate it around like this so that it's a, a spiral but in this instance they've kind of they've just basically just smooshed it on and put a drop of hot milk glue at the end there it's not ideal uh, the power from this powers three leds down here that reflect off the mylar and it also goes to the motor that is running the fan for speed control and power control it's a diode a diode right up against that plastic. Not That's not just the hot thing next to plastic here. But it's a standard one amp diode. And uh, depending which way you switch the switch, it'll either go straight, it'll power this directly, or it'll power it via the diode. The other thing, I thought this was a metal grill in the front. No, this is plastic. It's a plastic outlet grill. How's that going to fare with a 400 watt heater blowing at it? That's a bit freaky. But anyway... Let's get on to the schematic. That's a bit we want to see. Anything else worth mentioning in here? Not really. Salvageable bits, quite like this. 
I quite like the little Mylar effect thing. It's very nice with uh, blue or green LEDs. It gives it a sort of sci-fi plasma effect. Bring in the schematic. Oh, that's a reasonable enough position. I shall focus down on that. And we shall explore the schematic. It's a bit swamped out, but that's fine. Uh, live comes in and it goes to that three position switch. The middle position is off. The high position is going straight to the ET element. The low position is going via this diode. Neutral comes in and it goes through the one shot thermal fuse, which is the last resort if uh, everything's basically going on far. And then it goes through the thermal cutout, which is designed to handle temporary blockages or airflow issues. And then it will reset afterwards. And then it powers this heating element. Now, I've drawn the heating element old-fashioned resistor style because it just seems appropriate, being sort of rheostaty, which is what it is. There's a tap taken off that, and it goes to a bridge rectifier, so it's getting a much lower voltage than going across the full thing. I should have tested that. I shall test that. Um, I shall test that right now. One moment, please. Test complete. 6.5 volts, dropping a bit when it's running with the, uh, in its half-wave mode. That is unsmooth. There is a position on the tiny little circuit board that's just splodged down the side of the bridge rectifier right across it, but they've not smoothed it. And uh, so that's just choppy, full-wave rectified or half-wave rectified DC, depending on the mode it's in. There is the fan running directly across that and the effects motor running directly across that. And then each of the three LEDs has its own resistor in series, three 330 ohm resistors. Peculiar, strange little circuit, but it's not complex, it's very simple. Um, I have mixed thoughts about this heater, to be honest. I'm not sure whether I prefer this one, which is quite noisy, or this type here. I mean, I could plug this one in if you want. Hold on, let's plug it in. Oh, it came with a death adapter, complete with the sleeved earth pin it. City at an odd angle. Let's plug this one. I've not tried this one yet. This is also going to make noise, isn't it? Is this one going to have the flame effect? Much quieter. Uh, much nicer. This one also has the digital control and top buttons, and it costs the same. The other one, I thought it was going to be special, but the other one is just basically a cheap version of these. Let's take a look down at this one uh, in the dark and see what it looks like. Hmm, to be honest... I think the other one had a nicer effect because it ran slower. This one's running quite quickly. There may be a fan speed selection button here. I don't know if that's going to affect the... There's a fan speed button. No, it controlled the fan, but not the, the effect. Okay, right back to the main video. Yeah, I think this one actually had a nicer effect from the actual the flame effect. That might just because they've compromised the space in the other one because all the electronics at the top. But this one, uh, the other, I'm holding the remote control here. This remote control belongs to the other one. It's got great text and it. it says, A key to start. Timing. The wind speed. Heat up and cool. Mmm, a key to start. Exciting. Uh, but that is it. Um, this one is no, It's cheap and nasty. It's very plasticky. It looks like uh, if you blocked it, it, it's got the thermal cutouts, but you know what? It, ultimately, it's the thermal fuse is going to go if it, if it gets too hot. But it's very plasticky. It's very simple. The strain relief is basically just the, the neutral wire just wrapped around this post. Uh, it doesn't really inspire a lot of confidence. So if you see a listing for one that looks a bit like this with the big, huge port through the middle of it, it may not be worth buying it. Uh, I think maybe you're better going for the ones of the PTC heater array. Although having said that, technically speaking, this should be more reliable than the heating element wise because it's very simple. But on the other hand, the motor in this one is a little brushed motor. Uh, I kind of prefer the computer fan style motors than other ones. But that is it. It's an interesting and trashy little product. And in that sense, it's quite pleasing, but I don't really recommend buying it.